This video contains more advanced concepts and technical terminology and is suitable for viewers age 13 plus. Today's video is marine reptiles. I've divided them up into plesiosaurs, mesosaurs and ichthyosaurs. Chronosaurus had a huge crocodilian jaw. It grew to about 30 feet or 10 meters in length which is about 10 feet longer than a great white shark. Pliosaurus. Analysis of bones from the four flippers suggests that the animal cruised using only the four flippers, using the back flippers for extra speed when pursuing and capturing prey. Romaliosaurus. Their teeth were good for gripping small prey rather than tearing chunks out of larger animals. Plesiosaurus. The forelimbs are elongate and relatively narrow compared to those of most plesiosaurs. Elasmosaurus was a good hunter. It used its long neck to get close to prey without them noticing. A swift flick of the neck could catch them unawares. Its small head limited the size of what it could eat. Elasmosaurus travelled long distances to find mating and breeding grounds. Early in their evolutionary history, the plesiosaurs split into two main lineages. The pliosaurs, in which the neck was short and the head elongated, and the plesiosauroids, in which the head remained relatively small and the neck assumed a snake-like proportion and became very flexible. Plesiosaurus has simple needle-like coned teeth that are slightly curved and circular in transverse section. They are sharply pointed with fine striations running from tip to base and point forward. Atenbarosaurus is an extinct genus of Pliosaurid from the early Jurassic. It is named after David Attenborough. Hydrotherosaurus had one of the longest necks relative to total length among elasmosaurids with 60 vertebrae in total. Dolly Corinkops was an ocean-going prehistoric reptile. Its Greek generic name means long-nosed face. Liopleridon was the apex predator of its marine ecosystem, relentlessly feeding on fish, squid and other smaller marine reptiles. Tylosaurus acquired its snout projection rapidly at an early stage in life. It's also suggested that it was not due to sexual selection that both male and female Tylosaurus had this. Plesiosaurs were around during the late Triassic period into the late Cretaceous period. Mosasaurus. Its skull tapered off into a short conical tip. The jaws were armed with massive conical teeth. Its body ended in a strong tail, which other mosasaurid fossils suggest had a fluke similar to those of sharks and some ichthyosaurs. The body probably remained stiff to reduce drag through the water, while the end of the tail provided strong propulsion. Tylosaurus has an elongated cylindrical premaxilla or snout from which it takes its name. Tylosaurus was a dominant predator of the Western Interior Seaway during the late Cretaceous. 
the mosasaurs competed with other marine reptiles, the plesiosaurs and ichthyosaurs for food, which consisted mainly of ammonoids, fish and cuttlefish. Mosasaurs had snake-like bodies and large skulls and long snouts. Ichthyosaurus was about 3 meters or 10 feet long. It used its paddle like appendages to steer. It propelled itself by using its fish like tail and by undulating the body. Temnodontosaurus had incredibly large eyes, which were approximately 20 centimeters or 8 inches in diameter. It lived in the deeper areas of the ocean. Uranosaurus was a typical ichthyosaur with a fish-like fusiform body including well-developed dorsal fin, vertically orientated lunate caudal fin and paired pectoral and pelvic fins. Excalibosaurus has an extreme elongation of the rostrum with the lower jaw about three quarters the length of the upper jaw giving it a swordfish look. The ichthyosaur family. They are very similar to porpoises. They are distant relatives of lizards and snakes called lepidosaurs. The earliest marine reptiles appeared in the Permian period during the Paleozoic era. During the Mesozoic era, we start to see the ichthyosaurs, plesiosaurs and mosasaurs. See you guys in my next video.